Now, according to the security industry's own figures, they could be getting on for 6 million CCTV cameras in Britain. That's almost one camera for every 11 people. This means that the UK has more surveillance of its citizens than any other country in Europe. And this week, a parliamentary committee concluded that the British Data Gathering Centre, GCHQ, didn't break the law when accessing the personal data of British citizens. So should we be concerned about the erosion of privacy? Broadcaster James Whale doesn't think so. This is his Sunday Stand. When you're out and about, you're likely to see one of these, or one of these, or more. But rather than feel threatened by them, give them a smile. They're there for our security and protection. The amount of CCTV cameras we have here in Britain makes some paranoid about their privacy. But for me, it's comforting. I don't mind being spotted, taking the dogs for a walk or going down to the shops for some milk. Why should I? I know the streets are going to be safer for them. I'm proud to live in a country that, for the main part, has kept terrorism at bay. I think one of the main reasons for this is our world-class surveillance. CCTV cameras and monitoring of our emails and phones are helping us sleep well at night. So I have no time for those people to go on and on and on about the erosion of our civil liberties. I'm free to do whatever I want as long as I'm not breaking the law. Do you think that those who read our boring emails or our tedious texts really care about our day-to-day -day lives? If you've got nothing to hide, you've got nothing to fear. This surveillance society is not something we should fear, it's something we should take pride in. So, if you're watching, Big Brother, hello. So, are we being observed in all sorts of weird places? Well, that's what James Well says he doesn't mind. In fact, we should be proud of it, uh, George. The, the threat is international terrorism, and we should be proud of the fact that, yeah, we compromise a bit on privacy, but we're safer. It doesn't work. <laughs> it didn't stop 7-7. It didn't stop 9-11. You saw CT. Uh, see TV camera shots after the event, but it didn't stop the event. And we see this time and time again, particularly in the inner city in London where I, I work and have lived for many years. We, we, we're forever seeing what happened uh, with the people after the event, but the event takes place, so it doesn't prevent uh, crime from happening I mean, in the kind of way that people would like to think well, it does. Pavan, I suppose a lot of people would say actually it was after 9-11 uh, and after 7-7 mm -hmm. when actually a lot of these people, there wasn't the resources to follow them up. There's concern that now we know the level of, of security that's required. And perhaps no, only now are these demands being made on our privacy, but they still make sense. But I, I actually agree with what George is saying here, because actually there is, there is no robust evidence out there which demonstrates that there is any correlation between the, the huge increased use of CCTV and high rates of arrests and convictions, con most importantly convictions. So our privacy is being eroded, um, but for what, what benefit that hasn't been demonstrated? Isn't there, isn't there a lot of evidence um, that, of course, it's only when something goes wrong that it makes the headlines. Actually, if you look back over the years, I remember Jonathan Evans used to run MI5, talked about 2,000 um, potential plotters that they were observing, the number of plots that might have been thwarted but never actually took place. Well, in which case, because the, home, of security. the Home Office shouldn't be scared of doing a, a full cost-benefit analysis of the use of these systems um, and, and showing them to us. And, and even with, you talk about this data gathering, even with the, the chap who did the, the murder of the soldier in, in Woolwich, they had data the, on him and it still didn't Well, these, these, are, these are two people who have been arrested and are pending trial uh, for that. Um, it's interesting, James, that there is a very strong feeling of unease among some people that there is too much surveillance right. and that actually a right. lot of it doesn't really provide benefits. Two points. First of all, uh, we don't know how much uh, CCTV cameras are talking about, how much surveillance has stopped terrorist attacks. We don't know because they've been stopped, we haven't heard about them, and that's as it should be. The majority of CCTV cameras, as I understand it, are privately owned, and that's fine. 
I have no problem with being followed around by a camera. If they start to use it for the wrong reasons, if our governments change and become intrusive in our lives and say you can't walk down there, you can't go there, then that's a different thing. But at the moment it's used, I hope, to keep us safer. And it does work, and I do feel safer. I'm not bothered. I'm not doing anything that is illegal. If I'm doing something that's illegal, then I should be worried about it, and I should be caught. I just want to bring in Emma Carr here, um, who's the Deputy Director of um, Big Brother Watch UK. Um, what is the big deal? When you know so many people say they're not bothered about CCTV cameras, you know, they're, they're not in our homes. Why, why should we be unhappy at the idea of surveillance? Well, as has been said by a few of your guests there, it just simply doesn't prevent crimes from happening. And that's absolutely what any crime prevention me methods should be used for. But CCTV costs absolutely millions of pounds, and we haven't yet had a very public and transparent debate about the use of CCTV. There, are, there isn't any empirical evidence to suggest that it actually works. And so why are they being used on such a, such a large scale? I think there's a huge misconception amongst uh, people going along their daily lives that it actually prevents crime from happening. And when they see that actually it isn't leading to convictions, it isn't preventing you from in being some attacked cases on the street is, though, or isn't it? I mean, in some well, cases it's the, brought in as, as evidence and used for, to secure convictions, isn't it? Very occasionally, but actually looking at the evidence, it shows that a lot of the time the images aren't good enough quality okay. to be used yeah. in Emma, court. Emma, is the bigger concern actually not CCTV? Is it about data collection more broadly? Well, data collection more broadly is, is a very hot topic at the moment, and, and, and I think that makes people feel a lot more insecure than CCTV cameras do. I think the thought of the government collecting all of your personal communications makes people feel very nervous. But we know that you know the, the um, security services collect about two to 3,000 people's uh, communications on an intelligence-led basis, and they're finding it difficult enough to manage those people's communications. So the suggestion recently to try and do it on a mass basis for the entire country just seemed absurd if they can't manage it for the people that they actually want to target. Okay, um, thank you. I just want to bring in another contributor here, who's Simon Adcock, who's chairman of the British Security Industry Association. Now, as we've heard, I think most C CCTV cameras are actually owned by private companies. But there is a concern just about this idea that private businesses are collecting all this data on us. That's been the heart of Edward Snowden's concern uh, when he whistle blew. He wasn't working for the CIA. He was working for a private contractor. And this idea that private companies are making money and potentially passing on information in a way that's not being monitored and could be abused. Uh, well, yes, we're, we're right to be concerned about that. But the, the BSIA's... Um estimate had a, a top end figure of 5.9 million cameras but more important than the number of cameras as you say is what they're what are they looking at and who controls the images that they produce and how is that uh, how is that regulated so a, a key finding of the BSA study is that only around one and a half percent of the cameras are owned and operated by the government and the overwhelming majority of cameras represent an investment by private organizations looking to protect their businesses their staff property and other, other assets so the market decides how many cameras there are, not anyone oh, the market decides. Not the government. But Do you have any evidence that they make us safer? You're hearing a lot of people, uh, like Emma Carr, they're saying, you know, there's no proof that all this surveillance actually prevents crime or helps get enough convictions. Well, in, in, terms of, um, in terms of CCTV evidence being useful to the police, there was a, a 2009 study carried out by um, Scotland Yard uh, where CCTV was actually uh, useful in 95% of, of murder cases. Uh, and the um, uh, the gentleman in charge of um, CCTV use for uh, the murder investigations at the time said that it was as valuable to the police and as vital to detectives as DNA evidence or fingerprints. Okay. I mean, I, I don't think you get uh, some more resounding endorsement than that in terms Thank of its you. effectiveness. But Thank the difficulty briefly, in proving Sam, yes. that it prevents crime is you need a, a baseline study before you install it. Uh, and then as, as further, inf further inf uh, information and studies afterwards to demonstrate how it's reduced crime. Sure. I think with, with CCTV cameras, let's move it on, because clearly there's dispute about how much you can prove it. He's absolutely right, though. And it, 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 it's a benefit to all of us, whether we accept it or not. Right. Well, I think there's more it, chance of a CCTV camera picking up your, your car parking illegally than picking up somebody smashing your car. Don't park illegally. That's, that's crime it's very easy, George. No, you know, don't no, park no, illegally. I, I make a real point, because my office in London, we had our windows smashed. We couldn't get any evidence of the uh, the perpetrator, but when somebody parked outside our office, yeah. 
uh, he certainly got his ticket. You need that more cameras. Could, there just needs to be a balance there. If, if we look at the data collection, point is, the same camera. We, sure. should, we should advocate for evidence-led policy making. So if there is, in fact, benefits from having this huge proliferation in CCTV cameras, let's look into it. Let's look into the research into it, whether it does make people feel safer. But for a private does, company, yeah. it's, it's, it, you, know, you can have as many cameras as you can afford or you want. I, I understand what you're saying about government-controlled stuff, yeah, but for private companies, but if they want to have them... But we're being watched as a public, so therefore this yeah. should be something but that government should be looking at. you're not doing anything wrong, are you? Oh, I'm, well, I'm not well, doing anything wrong. Don't worry <laughs> about it's it. a really interesting argument, but you know, if you look at the history, you can look at my emails, you at the history of you governments. You, yeah, you were the one who mentioned look. communist states. Mm. Isn't there a reason why people uh, like Pavan and like George are really concerned about the idea whether it's private businesses recording it or governments recording it? You look at um, you know, the, the Stasi like East German something. surveillance yeah, state. If There's a tendency very easily, if you've got the technology, potentially to abuse it. Yeah. Well, that, that's what the gov and that's one thing I agree. If the government suddenly tell us, well, you can't go out dressed like that, James, or you can't go and do that, or you can't, then I think we are very lucky to well, live in a democratic system where the people, George, would actually have their say. I, b I believe we're a far more intelligent country now. I don't think what happened in communist countries like that so would happen So we have a here. democratic structure that would protect us, it, says yeah. James. Well, we've seen it with the Stephen Lawrence case. They decided, the government, the police, uh, an organ of the state decided we're going to investigate this. And we should this. say that the police officially say that they can't confirm this, but we yeah, have... Uh, allegedly. Uh, uh, we have an individual yeah, officer who says yeah. this is what and happened. And that's an organ of the state who can use all this data, and it if, will be abused, it's if, already been abused, if, and this is why it's very, very dangerous. If we find out that this has been uh, abused and has been used so, it will be dealt with quite rightly. It's out in the public domain now. With, with internet, with Twitter, with Facebook, with everything else that we have available now, it is very difficult, very difficult for any country to keep the people completely... I mean, it's interesting, Puffin, that a lot of this data is stuff that we put out there. And everyone's always been told about what you post on Facebook haunts you forever. But the idea that governments were scanning emails looking for trigger words, yeah. which might help them pick up potential Islamist or other forms of terrorist um, activity potentially... Many people say, what's wrong with that? They don't want to read all your emails. They're looking for threats. Mm. But it's the fact that we don't know that they have access yeah. to our data. Mm -hmm. I mean, this throws up obviously huge sort of human rights issues as well, the Ed Snowden right. case. Um, because, so if we profess to live in, a, in a, an open society, uh -huh. democracy, then we should know what sort Why of information you know? that the government is collecting but, but, on know, us. Because it is our private you data. You won't know. I, don't, I, I mean, if you're saying anything that's interesting, that's fine, I'm and sure. But they can read any email I send. They can listen to all my phone calls. Um, I, and if that gives them a, 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 a bit of a laugh, great. I don't think they'll want to. If, for, for instance, you think we're going to know what the Secret Service are doing, even if they tell you that uh, this is what we're doing and we get, a, uh, we, we get permission to do this, we get permission to do that, rubbish. But the Secret you, Service are there to actually operate secretly and protect us. But this idea that us. there is abuse already going on and the idea that it could be malicious um, use of data so easily by individuals. There are stories in the papers yeah. every week when about individuals people use it maliciously, life. they must be dealt with under the law and they should be dealt with far more severely than they have been. Okay, James, Pavan. James, James, just, just, can I just take Pavan in there? I was, you were going to comment on that. Yeah, I would say, that. James, do you think that that is actually... Um, do you think that there's actually any relation between that and actually being, li being, able, being able to profess that we live in a democracy if we know that <laughs> this is the sort of thing that goes on? And we, now but we know, and we be only very, know because of whistleblowers. I think we'd be very sadly. naive to think that people weren't keeping a check on various people. I don't think, I mean, I, they might read my emails occasionally, I don't know, or Samira's. They'll definitely read uh, Reverend um, uh, Five Stars. Can I just bring in some, some comments here from viewers? Um, Norman says, we are now living in a big brother state which watches everything we do. It, it's like a communist state. Anonymous one, I'm a police officer, and I've lost count of how many cases are dropped because there isn't CCTV, going back to something we were discussing earlier. And Stuart says, I work with lots of young people, and a lot of them are deterred by the presence of cameras. Mm -hmm. Not that being young is, is a crime. Can I but, just say to, but that's an interesting just say to that bloke who thinks he's living in a communist state, he's obviously never been to a okay. communist state. George. Now, you're George. happy to have all your email read, and I'm yeah. happy for you for that. But what about okay. the people who are sending you the emails? Don't they have a right to, to decide whether, if I'm going to phone James Whale, um, my conversation, my end of it gets listened to? Well, and is there not a chilling... I've is, spent is, many is years... George finish, yeah. is that George and, finish? And is there not a chilling effect on the freedom of speech and general conversation yeah. if you think, well, Big Brother's watching me? And, I, you know, George, there's a chilling... How can anybody who spends his time 
talking as much as you do publicly actually think that? Well, uh, you I, know, I, I you think, like people to listen, hear what you say. Listen, listen, listen I think it for granted that my phone calls will be listened to. I'm a person of interest, maybe. But the average Joe who's not a public speaker, not a public figure, has a right, I believe a moral right, to privacy. OK, we'll have to leave it there, but thank you all very much indeed. Uh, later on Sunday Morning Live. Is RE OK or should religious education...